let's face it, flipping cards, stacking chips, rolling around the roulette table, it can build up quite the appetite. If you need to refuel for the next round, Rivers is flowing with options. So we're standing uh, in the middle of our marketplace, which has four different concepts. There's burgers and breakfast that flipped, Italian at Johnny's, Asian mix at Mian, and if you need a late night jolt, coffee and dessert at Villa Italia. Open 24-7 at the casino. Serves espresso, cappuccino, coffees, pastries, cookies, cupcakes, cinnamon buns, you name it. You need caffeine to gamble all night. Right? Absolutely. Well, this is our casual steakhouse. Duke's Chop House, featuring everything from a 12-ounce top sirloin to a 32-ounce porterhouse. So whether you're playing the penny slots or looking to raise the steaks with a bigger cut, you won't find anything else like it in Schenectady. We don't have a steakhouse here. So from that standpoint, it's an affordable one. It's not a special occasion event, but we want people to come here on a regular basis. And if you need to wash it down, the mixologist at Van Slicks has got just the drink for you. He's been uh, constructing a lot of cocktails, so there's... What can I do for you today? Buffalo tender, no lettuce, no tomato. Good morning, Genoa. We try to keep things uh, new and exciting for the customers coming in. It's the friendly customer service and unique sandwiches that owner Bob Didio says keeps customers coming back to Genoa Importing in Loudonville. He opened up shop in this historic building in 1990, just up the street from Siena College. God bless those kids, they can eat. I remember eating the eggplant farm sub like 15 years ago and I've been thinking about it ever since. They serve hot food and more than 50 specialty subs on freshly baked bread, all topped with premium and homemade cheeses and meats. The U Albany campus in winter might not be the most inviting place, but inside the SEFQ arena, it's quite comfortable, especially for the Great Danes. There isn't a building in the league with more championship banners. What made it appealing to Joe Cremo and Greg Steyer had nothing to do with that. That was my only offer at the time. Division one, this was really my only option. Steyer and Cremo were both well-known, highly thought of section two players just not highly recruited. For Will Brown, keeping talent close to home is nice, but it's important to not keep it on the sidelines. It's a more than 60-year-old Troy Staple, now run by its third generation. My grandfather started the import store in 1951, and then my father started the pizzeria in 1989. Once considered to be the hidden gem of Troy, DeFazio's Pizzeria is now widely considered to be some of the best pizza in the capital region. Father and son team Rocco and Matt stay true to authentic family recipes passed down from Italy. The homemade pizza dough is my great-grandmother's bread recipe, uh, the sauce, my grandmother's recipe. Most of their menu items are made from scratch. When you bite into homemade pasta, you know it. You know this is not coming from a box. My parents it's still that in me that you have. It was a beautiful, uh, calm day in Lake George. It was um, as nice a day in October that you would ever, ever get. And uh, it just became, I would think, the darkest day in Lake George since I've been mayor. Lake George Mayor Robert Blaze witnessed a lot in his 42 year tenure as mayor but this day was drastically different. Went up to the site on Kramer Point where you could see the uh, folks that had perished lying on a lawn of one of the uh, homes that uh, fronted on the lake. And of course the uh, rescue had already uh, been underway. The Ethan Allen, a small cruise ship owned by the Shoreline Company, made a sharp turn on the lake and capsized at 3 p.m. that afternoon. The boat had a tour group of 47 passengers, all senior citizens from out of state, plus a crew member. The first thing I did was say a prayer. Um, you know, the boat had capsized. I knew that there were elderly people on the boat. These folks that had come to us from the Detroit, Michigan area uh, by bus to enjoy um, all of the beauty and 
uh, foliage in, in Lake George um, had gotten on that vessel and uh, unfortunately many of them had perished. It starts with the smoked meats. More than 50 types of European custom meats, says co-owner Ken Alterac. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All handmade at Chester's Smokehouse in Albany. The way that we smoke everything is different than the traditional type of like barbecue style of smoking. The smoke is added for flavor. The smoked meats are the centerpiece of their new restaurant in Troy. Each dish from their signature meatball sandwich. It's about the size of a softball, and it's definitely a whole meal. It's almost a whole pound meatball, so it's it's definitely a, quite a handful. To their now famous kielbasa, thanks to a rave review by Martha Stewart, homemade pierogies and corned beef are all prepared to order by Chef Bob. From the corned beef to everything that's made in-house. We smoke our own cheese, we make our own dressing, we have a specialty bread, and uh, that's why we're the best. Being from Troy, like a lot of people, they don't really leave Troy. Javion Ogunyemi has spent a majority of his 20 years in Troy. It was here he found his first love, even if at first the love was unrequited. The first team I played for was from uh, the Boys and Girls Club in Troy. And to be honest, I wasn't really that good. As time went on, the self-described pudgy kid grew taller, thinned out, and started to get very good. But there was always one big rule his mother had when it came to hoops. Um, I remember in seventh grade, I couldn't play on the middle school team here because my grades weren't where she thought they should be. His mother, Thomasina, found a tough love partner at Troy High. Javion hated my guts. Um, I was so tough on him, and mom was my biggest fan. She made sure he was doing the right things, and she did not want to lose him to the streets. Javion spent his time away from the streets and on the court, and by his senior year, he had eight or nine schools offering. He wanted to stay close to home and committed to Siena. Following a coaching change, Javion started to have a change of heart, but his mother never did. I remember it was, it was funny because the first meeting we had with Coach Passos, we were talking and I was trying to fill him out a little bit. And I remember my mom, she didn't really say too much at first. And the first thing I remember she saying was, was Mitch told her that I could move in on June 15th and she just wanted to know if that was the same thing with Coach Passos. So she pretty much told him that I was going back before I did. He did move in for that summer on June 15th. Following summer school, he came back to Troy before classes officially began. Sometimes when I get back here, it's a little depression just a little bit because just when my mother passed right upstairs. We just got done with summer school and I happened to, I happened to be home that day. I found out like the day before that the doctor said that she only had six months. So I was kind of preparing myself for maybe a couple weeks or a month or two. I didn't know it was going to be the next day. Javion's rock, his mother Thomasina, lost her battle with cancer right before his freshman year. That day still sits in my head. A lot of kids, as you know, could have gone south right there. And, and um, he didn't. He, he stayed focused. Just, and also remember all the things that his mom was teaching him and, and it was kind of like, okay, she led me this far, now I, I can't let her down. And he didn't let her down. Javion went to Siena, got good grades and got some playing time his freshman year. He took a huge jump in his sophomore season, but at the end of that year, the kid from Troy decided it was time to see what else was out there. He says he was the first person in his family to leave the area. He went to Boston University but just weeks into his transfer, more heartache. His cousin, who was like a brother to him, was killed. Once that happened, it kind of just like set me back a little bit. I mean, I was kind of down. And you know, I just realized that, you know, maybe I, it just made me think about where, why am I really out here? And most importantly, you know, I kind of just felt alone. And at the end of the day, I think that's like one of the worst feelings. Emotionally, you know, he, I think he hit rock bottom.